majority of all design students are women, but according to a Design Council survey, only 40% of professional designers are women. So where do they all go? Let's take a step back and look to the turn of the 20th century, 1920 to be exact, the year that women were given the right to vote. Before graphic design became a recognised profession, poster design and caricature were practised predominantly by men. It was the suffragettes that took this medium to a whole new level and gave it an entirely new purpose. Posters that would win women the right to vote. Graphic design held a certain type of power and it wasn't long before more women were being brought into the industry. One of the first of those women being the iconic C.P. Pinellas. Working for Condé Nast through the 1930s and the 1940s, C.P. became the first woman to join the previously all-male New York Art Directors Club. In the 1950s, the introduction of the pill brought more women to the workplace, even boosting pay equality by 30%. This decade inspired more young female designers to fight for their place in the male-dominated industry, such as Muriel Cooper. If you're not sure of who Muriel Cooper is, then you might recognise this. Cooper was one of the first graphic designers to embrace the technology of the computer age in 1967. She founded MIT Media Lab and went on to teach a new generation of designers to embrace digital design. So why now, when 70% of design students are women, is 60% of the industry male-dominated? In 2009, Design Council conducted a survey within the UK design industry. This survey covered a vast number of design businesses with ranging disciplines such as communications, interior, fashion, digital and multimedia, and service design. Out of the 232,000 designers surveyed, only 40% were female, and while this study may be almost 10 years old, not a whole lot has changed in those years. As recently as 2017, it was found that only 11% of designer leadership roles are being held by women. When looking at those studying design, it's pretty easy to see what contributes to the reason as to why that 60% of those working in the industry are men, because all we need to do is look into the classrooms. There's not exactly a whole lot of representation out there for young women studying design to reference to when most of the designers that students are being taught about are men. While this isn't a huge problem in itself, it means that young women aren't being exposed to any significant female role models. Remember that 11%? There aren't exactly a whole lot of female creative directors for those students to look up to. Rocket Horn, the Chair of Graphic Design at Maryland Institute College of Art, believes in the exposure and representation of women in design. Problems still perpetuate if the media only represents those with the highest profiles, if conference organisers don't do their research to discover new and relevant voices, if education doesn't look at a range of role models, if teachers ignore discussions of gender and representation, then we are not taking our responsibility as designers, as a profession, as educators, and our duty to the public seriously enough. I'm really glad you brought up conferences there, Brockett, because that brings me on to my next point. The 3% Movement is an annual conference spread over two days. They believe that diversity equals creativity equals profitability. They're the reason that 3% grew to 11% in the first place. The 3% Movement is actually the first of its kind to promote and encourage female friendliness and to boost women's roles in the graphic design industry. And they won't stop until that 11% becomes 50%. But let's leave the US of A for now and head back over to Australia. Very little information is out there about the women in the graphic design industry. Since the 70s, women in Australia have comprised 50% of the graphic design graduates. Even the Australian Graphic Design Association's Hall of Fame only houses two women. The most recent inclusion being Alison Forbes, added in 2016. In AGDA's first national executive meeting held in 1989, None of the women that had graduated in the last two decades were present at the conference. Even though these women had gone on to start successful freelance businesses, all those in attendance were men. There's not a whole lot of hope for AGDA's male-dominated attitude to change anytime soon. If you take a peep at the AGDA awards, only 25% of winners are women. Each year. Going back three decades. Thanks, AGDA. The 90s weren't much different. In 1996, 90% of art director and copywriter positions were held by men. 
This led to two main issues. One, a serious shortage of women's voices being heard. And two, a shortage in opportunities for women graduating from graphic design. By the mid 2000s, 783 people had graduated from Monash University and a booming 63% of that number was women. From 2012 onwards, the percentage of women graduating with design degrees had grown to 71%. More recently, however, there is an unfair amount of gendered bias stopping women from expanding their careers. A lot of stigma surrounds motherhood and the women that go down that path. Those women are usually overlooked for promotions, are paid less, and are perceived as no longer being committed to their careers since becoming mothers. Michaela Webb, the co-founder of Studio Round and co-founder of Studio Binocular, fought for her right to be taken seriously as a designer after becoming a mother, stating that she witnessed so many men becoming fathers and never missing a beat in their careers. So, what do we do now? We start with representation. We teach all of our students about the thousands upon thousands of incredible women designers out there. We bring in more women to do that teaching to encourage our students and to show them that there's every possibility out there for them to succeed. And most importantly, it's time to start taking us seriously. 